the Kohanim priest ministering in rotation watches found in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses six to eight. Tonight's topic, again, the Kohanim priest ministering in rotation watches. And our primary study text is Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse six to eight. It reads as thus, and if a Levite come from any of thy gates out of all Israel, where he sojourned, and come with all the desire of his mind unto the place which Yah shall choose, then he shall minister in the name of Yah, his Elohim, as all his brethren, the Levites do which stand there before Yah. They shall have portions to eat beside that which cometh of the sale of his patrimony. Our lesson tonight is illustrating the commitment of serving Yah above and beyond our usual scheduled commitments to his service. As illustrated tonight in our lesson regarding the law of the rotations and watches of the Levites who served in the sanctuary of Yah. Saints, sometimes the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, will move our hearts in such a way that it inspires us to serve Yah in new and more dynamic ways then we may be currently serving him. Our lesson tonight is regarding a servant of Yah who is inspired to serve Yah beyond his normal schedule of service in the sanctuary. In this case, this servant of Yah is a Levite priest. Now, the Levite priest had rotations of service in the sanctuary. Some of you may be familiar with that because the number of the tribe of Levi actually outnumbered the duties required to manage the services in the sanctuary. So a system of rotating watches based around the different family groupings of Levites was devised to regulate the different shifts or watches of duty that each family of priests performed in the sanctuary at their appointed times. In this way, all Levites were able to function in their chores of service in an orderly way. For instance, there is an example of this Levitical service schedule in First Chronicles chapter 24, verse 1 through 6. As you turn in your scriptures, 1 Chronicles chapter 24, verses 1 through 6, it says, now these are the divisions of the sons of Aharon, the sons of Aharon, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Verse 2, but Nadab and Abihu died before their father and had no children. Therefore, Eleazar and Ithamar executed the priest's office. And Dawi distributed them, both Zadok of the sons of Eleazar and Ahimelech of the sons of Ithamar, according to their offices in their service. Verse four, and there were more chief men founded the sons of Eleazar than the sons of Ithamar. And thus they were divided among the sons of Eleazar that were 16 chief men of the house of their fathers and eight among the sons of Ithamar according to the house of their fathers. Thus were they divided by lot, one sort with another. For the governors of the sanctuary and the governors of the house of Elohim 
were of the sons of Eleazar and of the sons of Ithamar. And Shemaiah, the son of Nathaniel, the scribe, one of the Levites, wrote them before the king and the princes. And uh, Zadok, the priest, and Ahimelech, the son of Abiathar, and before the chief of the fathers of the priests and Levites, one principal household being taken for Eliezer and one taken for Ithamar. And then also we read in 1 Chronicles chapter 24, verse 19, it states regarding the other Levite family service shifts in the temple as well. Verse 19, it says, these were the orderings of them in their service to come into the house of Yah, according to their manner, under Aharon, their father, as Yah Elohim of Israel had commanded them. Also in verse 20, it states, and the rest of the sons of Levi were these, of the sons of Amram, Shubael, of the sons of Shubael, Yahidia. Also in verses 26 through 31, it states, the sons of Merari were Mali and Mushi, the sons of Jazia, Bino, the sons of Merari by Jazia, Bino and Shalham, Zadpur and Ebri. Verse 28, of Mali came Eliezer, who had no sons. Concerning Kish, the son of Kish was Jeramiel of the sons of Mushi, Mali, and Eder, and Jeremiah. These were the sons of the Levites after the house of their fathers. These likewise cast lots over against their brethren, the sons of Aharon, in the presence of Dawid the king, and Zadok, and Ahalimelech, and the chief of the fathers of the priests and Levites, even the principal fathers, over against their younger brother. So you can see such a regimented and orderly priestly system of system of duty ensured a rotation watch schedule for the Levites that actually provided a 24-7 daily coverage of Levitical service in the temple. But in our lesson tonight in Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 6 through 7, Yah commands for ordinal adjustments to the regular priestly system of service for those Levites who had already serviced in their allotted regular shift of duty. But rather than returning home to their family farms and waiting until the next regular tour of duty that their family participated in in the temple, some priests were inspired to do overtime service unto Yah in the temple beyond their regular scheduled rotation watch. You know, sometimes saints, y'all may inspire your heart to be like those kind of Levites, to do a additional service to him beyond your regular service to him. Because I hear it in your talk. Some of you have told me that you like to do certain things, like, for instance, going into prisons. Others want to do things for educating young people. And, and I hear you. And one of the things about this fellowship is we're not here simply to provoke thought. But scriptures say we should provoke one another for good works and good service as well that should accompany our talk is our service. And sometimes y'all may inspire your heart to be like these Levites who said, you know, I enjoyed working in this sanctuary when it was my allotted time to do it. But because of my love for y'all and because I feel a calling in my life, I want to do something more than just that. I want to do something beyond that. And even though we saw in Chronicles they had such an orderly rotation, as orderly as that rotation was, Yah decided 
that there could there would have to be an accommodation for those who want to exercise their priesthood a little bit more than just that. And some of you tonight, because you're a nation of priests, you, you may want to expand your, your ministry of service and priesthood other than just showing up for, for Torah study or just showing up for Shabbat. Some of you feel led to show up at the hospital with giving encouragement to the sick. Some of you feel led to show up in the prisons. Others of you may be led to show up at mission houses where people are destitute. And, and, and y'all may lay it on your heart to do additional service. So tonight we, we really wanna look at how Yah coordinates, coordinates us for this. First of all, this extra kind of service, as we read in chapter 18 of Deuteronomy verse 67, is strictly free will. It's nothing that Yah commands you to do beyond what you're already doing, but it's something you want to do. Then go hard and love for Yah, because we're supposed to love Yah with all our heart, with all our soul and all our might. When you love somebody like that, you want to do duty and service above and beyond. You, it just compels you to do. And so sometimes y'all may inspire your heart to be like these kind of Levites, to want to do additional service to Yah beyond your regular service unto him. So in observing this law in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse six through eight, we see how Yah deals with those inspired Levites who want to work more for him than is required. Isn't that wonderful? When you see a life in your life, he commands you what to do, but you want to do more than that. It's just like when people give tithes. You know, tithes is like 10%. So some people say, well, I, I didn't gave my 10%. That's good. But then sometimes isn't it nice when y'all been so good to, to you and you're so appreciative to his blessing that you just feel in your heart, I want to do a little bit more for you of appreciation. You might give some beyond, you might double that tithe, you know. And you can hear me speaking this tonight because I'm not raising up any collection. Some preachers will bring that up because they want you to feel that collection pan. Well, I can't put a collection pan through Zoom. But you get the point I'm making is that sometimes out of appreciation and love for Yah and love for his people, he may inspire our hearts to do additional service to him beyond our regular service. So in, in observing this law in Deuteronomy chapter 18, uh, verse 6 through 8, Yah, Yah deals with people like these inspired Levites who, who want to work more for him than is required. From this lesson tonight, we can catch a glimpse of how Yah deals with us when we decide of our own free will to increase our work and service for him because we just want to do that. We love to do this. We're not feeling we have to do this. Uh, because it's mandated for us to do this. We're doing this because we love Yah, we love his people, and we want to serve him, and we want to serve his people better. Hallelujah. Say, for instance, let's look in verse 6 in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18. Look at this. In verse 6, Deuteronomy chapter 18, Yah states in verse 6, and if a Levite come from any of thy gates out of all Israel where he sojourned and come with all the desire of his mind unto the place which I shall choose. Notice this. This is somebody that got a willing mind to work and serve Yah with all the desire of his mind. And the, and, and the word mind in Hebrew is really referring more to the heart. That, that there's in, in that person that there's a all uh, com there's a commitment above and beyond duty to serve Yah in the place which Yah chooses for you to serve him. Now, in this case, it was the place of the sanctuary for the priest. But you and me, in that place may be a variety of different places and institutions, schools, prisons, homeless shelters, halfway houses. Uh, just you feel led, you see the need, you hear the cry. 
you want to do something to help put clothes on the clothes list. You, you want to do something to help get food for the hungry. You, you find yourself wanting to do encouragement to those that need encouragement, spend time just calling up somebody to encourage you because the Holy Spirit is motivate your heart. And see, y'all got, got this commandment here for dealing with people like you. This, this is what this is dealing with it from the vantage point of the priest, but it's really dealing with people in different walks of service ministries. Like for instance, I'm a, she won't, she, she's not asked me to do this, but my dear wife, a lot of people don't know as a servant of Yah, and I'm trying to stay focused on the work of Yah, my wife sometimes, and I know they have these marriage seminars where they talk about never let your wife outserve you. You should be serving her, and I'm all for that. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes I need help when I'm doing the work of Yah and my wife. I don't have to beg her to do it. She just comes and does it for things for me. And I'm always amazed what compels her to do that. And, and I realize, hallelujah, that, that's a ministry that she has for helping me to do ministry. And I praise y'all for that. And I always look at her as an example. She's like my shero. I, I said, I, I wish, and I pray I can have that kind of commitment where I, I'm just always going above and beyond to serve and help. And so y'all got this law here. When you read this in Deuteronomy 18, verses 6 to 8, it's really talking about people like, like, like her or like you. I've heard many of you talk about some things you want to do. And, and, and this is the way Yah, Yah deals with, with people like this. First of all, that Levite, he came to the sanctuary beyond his time that normally he would serve. It, it was like when he finished his tour of duty with his family. Because, see, the Levites didn't have any possession in Israel. Their possession was Yah. So they didn't get any property other than the little farmland on the outskirts of a town. That's what they got. And they were spread out all over Israel. And so so their, their whole economy was based around serving Yah. Of course, uh, they had their own farms, you know, as well, too. But their, their, their whole economy and service, all of it was based around serving Yah. And uh, this Levite loved Yah so much, he, he wants to come and serve this, this work of Yah beyond what he's called to do. This is kind of like when Samuel, the priest, was born. He was a prophet. And his mother was so appreciative for what Yah did for her to give her that boy in the account of Hannah, the mother of, of Samuel. She devoted that boy the jewel of our heart, to live in the sanctuary as a priest all his life. That, that was because she had a desire in her whole mind. She didn't have to give her son up to serve like that, but she gave her son up because she was from a priestly family and her husband was of the priestly family. And that boy grew up to be one of the greatest prophets ever we see in the scripture. See, see, it's when you do work and service above beyond the call of Yah, be, beyond your regular work, it seems like it's when you, you do that, you begin to see some great moves of Yah. Uh, I don't know all the details. I'm not trying to give you a uh, little prescription on how you can get Yah to move by doing certain things for you, but I'm just telling you from experience, and I think some of you from experience have seen that, that sometimes, like for instance, today, I was getting together some resources for great work in the prison when Lorvins comes up for this ministry that we're gonna do in the prison studio. And it requires so much. And I was raising some funds and it was beyond what I thought I could do. It, it was beyond my, I, it was looking to be like a sacrifice. And yet it's a work I didn't have to do. And I'm not showing up my good work by, by saying this. I'm really trying to 
illustrate somebody else's good works. Because I want to get a reward for this, so I don't want to have my reward now by boasting of my good works. But I'm only saying this because what it was, I thought I needed above and beyond what I could think for ask. It came to me. Somebody heard what I was trying to do. And somebody said to me, here, here I, I, I heard what you're trying to do. Here, here's a check for 1,300. Now, what that would allow me to do is that allow me to help with some things to get done for the people we're going to minister to. None of it goes to me. I don't want nobody's money for me. I, I got a fixed income that I like. I got Social Security and I got a pension, and I don't want to make any more beyond that limit because I could lose that. So I'm, I never do want nothing for me, but it's what I see the needs for others. And I just saw that that just came out of the clear blue. And I find that when you commit yourself to something above and beyond, not because you feel compelled to do it, it's because it's in you to do it. The will of the Father and the love of the Father will come in you and compel you and you'll have the, the, the ambition and desire to want to do it. Because like this Levite, Instead of him turning around, going home with the rest of the family, if they did that to a dude, he turns around and comes right back to the sanctuary with the desire of his heart, the desire of his mind to serve Yah in the sanctuary. Uh, in verse six, we see this Israelite Levite who by himself says he just wants to go back to the temple. That it doesn't mention that all the rest of the people that he went to the temple with are uh, deciding to turn around and go back with him. It's just talking about that he's the one. He steps out of the group. While they're going one way, he's going another way. While they're going to get, uh, you know, recover and to, to relax from their duties and service, he feels compelled to turn around and go back and do more. He goes back by himself, even without the family group that he went with in the regular rotation watch. Now this, this commitment he does is due, as it says, because of he was doing this in all the desire of his mind, all the desire of his heart. See, y'all knows our, he knows why we do good and he understands and sees that the motives behind why we try to do good works. In other words, when you begin to go beyond what you, are, what you normally are doing, but you do it out of a sense of the Holy Spirit compelling you. In other words, that kind of commitment is not a half-hearted commitment unto the work of Yah. But this is a, a full-hearted commitment to the service of Yah that you have. Uh, this commitment is so strong on this priest, he's willing to go alone to do this work, even without the numbers of his regular family group with him. You know, people tend to want to, you know, they they tend to want to go with the popular move of the people. And it's, in this case, this what he's doing is not the popular move. And some people only come to things if there's a lot of people there, if not a lot of people, they don't want to, you know, it, it, it's like, I go where the people go. I do what the people do. If they think this is good for me to do this and they go and do it, I'm doing it. But it's something else when, when all of a sudden y'all compels you to do something and there's nobody else going with you to do it but you and him. That's, that's, that's the kind of commitment we see with the priest. So this commitment is so strong, he's willing to go alone to do this work even without the numbers or group with him. Sometimes some people who are inspired to do more service for Yah will only do it if there are numbers of other people who will do it with him. But this, this Levite is willing to go it alone to serve because he's going with he's going with all the desire of his heart, of his mind, which means his heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in verse 7. Yah gives special guidance and instruction 
for those of you who are like this Levite, who want to serve him, who want to serve y'all with all the desire of your heart above and beyond your regular routine service. This is the instruction and guidance that Yah gives for this Levite. It's in verse 7. Yah states in verse 7 of him. Then he shall minister in the name of Yah his Elohim as all his brethren, the Levites do, which stand before Yah. In verse 7, Yah gives the Levite permission to serve him and minister in the name of Yah in the sanctuary outside of his, his Levitical family's regular service rotation watch. You see, now you would think we saw how elaborate this, this rotation of the priesthood was. And, and you know, it's, it's almost like um, it's a rotation. I remember I used to throw boxes on an assembly line working for FedEx at the airport in Chicago years ago. And I needed some money. So I had a compulsion to work a little more and I was trying to go to the night shift. And the night shift guy, well, you know, sometimes a lot of people play hooky from work at night. So he always had room where if you wanted to come from the other shift straight into that, he'd take you in, you can make that extra overtime. And I remember one night, for some reason, I went and tried to do that. He said, I don't need you tonight. I got, I got too many now. I don't need you. You go home. Well, isn't it interesting that Yah got all these priests servicing the temple? Yah never tells that one who wants willingly to come in and work, I got too many. I don't need you. He doesn't tell the, the shift supervisors of the house of Aaron to say, well, you know, you served last week, so, you know, we got enough right now. We don't need you. Uh-uh. Yah is never going to turn back. Anybody that wants to do for him the work that the spirit leads them to do for him, he won't turn you back. He'll never tell you I got too many, even if he got everybody. There's always room for a willing heart that's committed. But Yah does have some instructions, though, to the person with the willing heart kind of commitment. He has special guidance and instruction for those who serve him. He says, of how they work. He says, they shall minister in the name of Yah as all his brethren, the Levites do, which stand before Yah, verse seven. In verse seven, Yah gives the Levite permission to serve him. He's not saying I got, I got more than I need on this night shift. And you can go back, uh -uh, Yah says, come on. But then Yah gives him some parameters. However, Yah gives special guidance instructions to that Levite who's coming back to do extra work. He is instructed to this Levite who's doing the extra service in the sanctuary is that that Levite must be within the regular service parameter of the ministry that he ordinarily does in the sanctuary during his regular shift. Because in verse seven it says, he shall minister in the name of Yah, his Elohim is all his and brethren, the Levites do. So, as you read, as we look, each family of Levites will assign certain chores to do that were just for their family to do in the temple. And so, Yah instructs this committed Levite that his overtime duties in the temple are only to be in the same duties that he performs that Yah commanded him and his father to do in their regular rotation. This is why it says in verse 7, he shall minister in the name of Yah his Elohim as all his brethren the Levites do. This, this phrase, all his brethren the Levites, is referring to his particular family in the tribe of Levi and all the duties they were assigned by Yah to do in the temple. Just because he is now doing extra work in the temple. He's not to change the other chores in the temple that Yah did not assign his family to do. That is, he's not to go outside the calling that Yah gave him to do. You know, sometimes people who are motivated, equipped, and gifted by Yah 
to do extra service for y'all. Sometimes many of them find frustrations with their progress in a particular extra work or service to y'all. And uh, they, they claim, you know, you hear this word, I bit off more than I can chew. You hear that? They'll say that because the, ex the reason why they feel like that is because the extra work they jumped into was not the work y'all had chosen and equipped them to do. See, that's the other secret with doing the extra work. You got to be sure it's what you're equipped and prepared to do, like the Levite. This Levite's rotation, if his, his rotation would be the ones to take care of the curtains of the sanctuary, because certain families had certain duties, then all of a sudden he want to jump up and do the, the work of, of uh, moving the Ark of the Covenant, uh, going to all of it. That's not his job. He, he can do extra work, but he was to do it within the parameters of what Yah called him to do. So he, he, he couldn't use, well, I'm going to do extra work so I can jump up and do other work than just my regular. In other words, Yah put the parameters. The reason why Yah does that, because Yah knows sometimes we want to do so much for him. But he also knows sometimes we don't realize that just some things he has for us that we can apply our hearts to do and we won't get frustrated so much with it. But then when we stretch ourselves beyond into some other things that really aren't our duties, it burns us out. And we say, oh, I bit off more than I chew in doing the work of y'all. For instance, I, I, I can tell you this, uh, I try to do a lot of things for the work of y'all in the Chicago area when I retired. And I was trying to get my footing, what y'all wanted me to do. I wanted to help save our young people out here in the streets that are caught up in all this madness and crime. So I got with a coalition. I made a coalition of people in Chicago that I worked with down through the years. Some of them were of the same background of teaching that I was, most of them weren't. But I just said, well, I got to put aside my differences for that just for the greater good of the overall Black community. Well, good and fine. That's nothing wrong with that. However, I got burnt out working with them. And it got so bad I had to step down from it because I found out that I was doing so many other things other than spreading the truth that I was doing community service, but I wasn't doing nothing with the truth. And in my work that I do, my life is based around the word. Now I'm working with a guy that's Muslim, the other guy a Christian, the other woman, she's something else, may not you know, tell him what she is. And we're all trying to do something for the community. That's good, that's good work. But I realized that was outside the parameters of what I'm good at, the way I was doing. My parameter of doing good for the community is preach and teach the word. Other people like you, some of you know how he gives you the ability, gift and time. Well, you can work with all these different people and still fulfill your obligation of service to God because he put it in you with the gift and time to be able to do it. I saw that evidently that wasn't my my gift and talent to do coalition building with people in the neighborhood. I could work to serve as a witness of truth to inspire them, but there were other people better suited to do that kind of work than me, you see? And I, you know, I had to step down from that. And I just devoted myself to what I could do that I was gifted to do, but I just committed myself to doing more of it. And that, that's, that's, that's what I ended up doing. And, and, and eventually I, I, I never get burnt out from teaching the word. I never get burnt out and tired from, from doing things to help saints and serve saints. You see that, that our people of like mind and also reaching out to people that, that, that I want to reach out to with the truth. But if you put me in a, a position where I'm not fully doing it, I'm, I'm like a duck out of water and I got burnt out. I felt worn out and I just had to step down. And I just, but I can teach and preach and I can go about going in prisons. I can go do things, you know, which as long as I'm in a position where I can teach and preach the unadulterated words. Even if I'm going in a, a prison or I'm going to a homeless shelter, I'm, I'm still at home when I can just talk what I know is true rather than hold my tongue because I don't want to offend somebody that's working with me who may be a Muslim or may 
be a Christian. Then I'm, I'm burnt out. You see, I had, to, I had to learn and develop this understanding. You, Yad is going to call you to do certain work and service. And what Yad's instruction to priest was, you only work within the parameters of what he called you to do. Don't get outside of what the parameters are, what he called you to do. Now, your calling of work, Yah may give you, it's going to be different than mine. Some of you, because I hear it in your voices, you can do things that will be outside the parameters, what I can do. All right? But just understand this. Be sure that extra work that, that we do, like he tells this Levi, do it according to what your brethren do. That is, if your, 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 your system of service was this, in your regular routine of service, then just do more of that. So Yah said, okay, you want to come and work in this in, in the temple more? Welcome, but you will just be working in what you ordinarily do in your regular rotation. If your regular rotation was to be the ones who carry the curtains or wash the curtains, this and that, don't try and be the high priest. All right. See, see, many find frustrations with their progress in a particular extra work of service to Yah, it's not because they bit off more than they can chew, but it's because the extra work they jumped into, like my case was, the extra work that they jumped into was not the work Yah had chosen, equipped them to do. But it's when we stay within the parameters of what Yah has gifted and called us to do, is then that we should achieve success in that extra work of service. This is why Yah commanded the Levite to do extra ministry within the parameters of his family's regular duties in the temple as command. If he started trying to be a high priest and that was not his or his family's assigned chores in the temple, his coming back would create chaos and confusion. You know, some people jump around from camp to camp trying to find out what they, their ministry and mission is. And sometimes, I must confess, I've had it with some people that aren't really committed to our teaching. They were a member of some church, and they'll jump in, and they'll come in and try to use this platform to do uh, things they weren't doing in their regular church. Because they say, well, my pastor wouldn't let me do this. My pastor wouldn't do that. And, you know, we had some sisters kind of want, want to be like preachers, you know. And every one sister jumped in. She, I mean, goodness, every time I would say a word when I'd be teaching preaching, she interrupt to bring it just abruptly interrupt. And I said, wait a minute, you're only going to have one teacher at a time. Scriptures say, you know, you read the book of James, chapter three, have not many teachers. Have not many teachers. Why? Because the tongue gets in the way and then it inflames the fellowship and it creates chaos and confusion. And well, that's what results, chaos and confusion. And it was out of order. See, y'all are not, not the author of confusion. He's not the author of chaos. He desires order. Now he wants hard workers. But he won't work as working in, in an orderly way that he lays out, not the way the pastor or the elder lays out. It's what he lays out. He, you can read the scriptures to see how we to function in the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the different offices of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, how we can function together in an orderly way with extra work and service, where we're not bumping into each other or, you know, <laughs> stepping on each other's toes when we want to do extra work for in service for Yah. Because see, if we go by the Ruach, the Ruach going to put us in the right niche of service and, and, and it won't burn you out. You won't get tired of it. You'll be uplifted with it. So if this Levite's coming in, he's, he's doing one chore in the temple on a regular basis. Now he's doing extra duty. That don't mean he can just jump up and take over duties that weren't assigned for him to do. So this is why it, if in doing his extra ministry, it's to be within the parameters of his family's duties in the temple as commanded. 
And if he started trying to be the high priest that was not his family's assigned chores in the temple, that would have created chaos and confusion. And actually, this did happen once among the Levites. When you read the account in the book of Numbers, as was the, the uh, case of the Levite rebellion in Numbers chapter 16, when the Levites wanted to be the high priest, he said, well, y'all didn't just call you. He, we're all called. We're all anointed. Yeah, we all anointed. We all called, but y'all anointed calls us for different duties. He don't call us together to clash in our ministry services and duties. And if there's any good an elder can do is work with those who want to do service to facilitate them, not limit them, but to facilitate their means to do it. A servant of Yah is also the servant of the people to facilitate what they can do for Yah. And he's not to be the, the hinderer. See, some, some, some ministers, uh, they play politics with, with who's going to do what in, in the service. They play politics with that. And I got out of the Christian church. I, I didn't agree with the doctrine, I believe, but I got out of the Christian church a lot more for that kind of schism. And lo and behold, I jump into the Hebrew Israelite movement. I see that's the, that there's some of that too among Hebrew Israelites playing congregational politics for chores and duties. Oh, I want to do the announcements. So, like I, we had a service once. And y'all bear with me. I'm, I, I didn't have frustration with myself mostly, but in some cases with others. There was a service and I'm doing all the duties and service trying to keep up with letting people into Zoom, keep up with who's going to do what. And just accidentally, I slipped my mind on what somebody's chore normally was to do. And the word got out, oh, he had a vendetta against that person. And yet, at the end of the service, I asked that person to do something because I thought they had done it at the beginning. If I had a vendetta, why would I do it? But there were people that wanted to spread that kind of confusion. And chaos. See, y'all, and want and people that want to serve to do duties in the ministry and work and service of his kingdom temple, the congregation. Uh, he, he wants us to do it with a humble spirit of just wanting to do it to please him, not to boast ourselves up or boost ourselves up, but to boost him up and to boost up others. And that's, it's all about the kind of spiritual attitude because the Levites rebelled against the high priest. See, the Levites were, worked as service. They did service under the guidance of the, the high priest. And then they all of a sudden said, well, we want to be a high priest too. So in our Hebrew to ministry, in our Hebrew ministry today, we should always be aware that as we are inspired, we can be inspired by Yah to do extra service for him. We have to be sure that we are operating within the parameters of his commandments for us to do. And finally, in verse 8, Yah commands for the Levite to be taken care of financially when he does his extra service for Yah. Yeah. Yah will bless you if you need it. While you're inspired to do extra service for him, it may, it may require you need a little more gas money. It may require you need some things, uh, stuff like materials and books or things you're going to use or clothes. and I think, All right. So you're doing that service within the parameters of what he's calling you to do. You may have a financial need that comes with that for your time and for your service. And so this, this is how God dealt with that for those who want to do extra service by him. Yah commands for the Levite to be taken care of financially when he does this extra service for, for him. And Yah, Yah will take care of you. Verse 8 says, they shall have like portions to eat beside that which cometh of the sale of his patrimony. Now, the Levite, as long as he functions in the extra ministry Yah 
inspired his heart to do in the temple. Yah would supply his needs according to his riches and glory. I know a lot of people love to quote that verse for Philippians. He will supply your needs according to his riches and glory. But when you read that chapter, it's really, that verse in context is, he's explaining it there for those who are doing the work of Yah. See, see that verse that he will supply your needs according to his riches and glory are for those who are doing the work of Yah. That, that verse doesn't apply for those they're not, they're not serving sacrificially for Yah. That verse is not for them. And I know I hear, you know, that the, the prosperity teachers getting up there using that. But this, this is for people like this. This verse in Philippians is for people like this Levite. Or anybody doing any work or service for Yah. But especially when you're doing extra service for Yah. And, 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 and Yah has a means to provide. Not that you're doing it to get rich, but I can assure you, when you go by the inspiration of your heart, you certainly are not a you're not going to get poor from it. You know, yeah, here's one thing I've learned from y'all, and you may have learned that some of us lived a little longer. Have you ever noticed y'all don't like being a debtor to nobody? Have you ever noticed that? Y'all does not want to owe anybody nothing. He never wants to be a debtor to anybody. Where you do something, say, "Oh, yeah, I didn't, didn't help me when I was doing this and that." I, in all my years of serving y'all, yeah, there's never a time I can look back where, now I can have confessed I didn't know where the extra was coming from, and it would not always come the same way to me. But somehow, some way, his supply would always catch up, catch up with the service I was doing. Somehow, some way, from a different ways. And some of you have lived long enough, you've seen this, and you know what I'm talking about. This, this is one of the things our ancestors knew about, coming out of slavery. I think that's why they were a little more committed to Yah, coming out of slavery. And yet, those of us who had ancestors who were like first generation or second generation removed from slavery, I, I was always amazed how they could do things even though they didn't have all the opportunities I had, they, would, they did some things I couldn't do. Like my grandfather from South Carolina, he grew up a sharecropper. Yet when he died, he had paid for all his children's college. I don't know how he did, he passed the four churches. I don't, he, he, he passed the four country churches. There's not a lot of big money with that. I don't know how he did it. He put all four of his children through Virginia State University. One became a lawyer, one a professor, another one a, a school. Uh, my mother was a school, one of the school of, of board of education. And I, I don't understand how he did it. But what I did know about him, but granddaddy was, he may not have known all the details of Hebrew and things like what we know, but he understood a principle that I'm still learning about when we serve Yah. Yah is never going to be a debtor to you when you do for him, when you do service beyond the call of duty for him. Now, I can't give you a prescription how he does it, but he does. I remember seeing my grandfather had. He, would, he wouldn't keep his money in the banks. And that's one thing they didn't trust banks. Uh, I guess because they went through the depression. When a lot of them had money in the banks and everybody made runs on the bank and people lost money big time. And he had saved up thousand dollars. He always kept money in the mattress or in his socks in his in the drawer, in his dresser drawer. I said, wow. I almost felt, and I know it, it's impossible. I almost felt like he paid for his, all his children's college just for money he stored in his socks. In the drawer, I don't know. All I know is y'all provide. Y'all will provide. Yeah, because y'all will never be a debtor to any of us when we go out on a limb for him. And that's why when you read this in verse eight, y'all has a plan for that, that priest, financial plan. As long as the priest function in that extra mini ministry that, that he decided to do for y'all, y'all would supply his needs. And I'm going to just show you an example of what this was like, because 
usually most of the priests live far from the temple. So if he lived far from the temple, that priest would come with his family. He wouldn't leave his family down. They would come up with him, his wife, children. And they had quarters, you know, they had priestly quarters for, for priests coming in like that. And, and so he would get his stipend for his service. The priests got stipends for their service in the temple, for their regular service. They got, they got a little salary, they got food and, you know, for that. But now this is overtime. And what, Yah, what would happen is if he came to give a devotion of his service in that temple for some time, he'd leave his farm so he could lease his farm out. So, so he's leased his farm out to somebody back home. So he, he's getting money from that. Then he's still getting a stipend for his service in the temple. So he's getting, getting a salary working in the temple. And then he's getting a stipend from the sale of his patrimony. Now, see, a priest could lease out his form, but that form would always, in the year of release, have to revert back to him. That is, so if somebody leased out, uh, leased out a form from a priest, they could never completely own it. It would always eventually have to go back to the priest. So that priest is getting money from that. He's getting money from his stipend. Yah gives him this so he can be freed up to do the work of Yah. Because he wants to do it from a, from a, 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 with all his heart. So in addition to collecting the temple portion for service in the temple, he, he's collecting, he's like a landlord. He's collecting rent from his farm downstate and out in the country. And so Yah does provide his, for that priest needs according to his riches and growth. And I'm here to tell you today, saints, and I, I'm always amazed what Yah does. I, I never cease to be amazed at what he does. I just got a witness today and I'm here to tell you there have been times I've seen some of our people destitute, down and out, homeless. They've been on this line. And you know, when somebody's destitute, down and out, you know, you can say, okay, I'm gonna give them a 200. I'm gonna, but well, you know, $200 is not gonna be the answer for such a struggle. Uh, today, I was talking with uh, Sister Soraya and I, we got dear friends that are kind of destitute right now. And I really want to do something for him. And somebody heard me talking about that. I mean, I'm not a financial advisor, but somebody heard me talking about it and somebody donated from which we're gonna to use to help those people. I'm here to tell you saints, Yah is so good. Yah is so good to you and me. That when we just want to do a little extra work, we just want to apply a little bit. He knows you want to do it. You're not doing it just to get him to pay you back. You're doing it because you love him and you love his people. And he responds to supply your needs according to his riches and glory. It never fails. It never stops. He's faithful and true. He illustrate how much he loves to see among his children when they go beyond. Not that he's mandating to go beyond. That he decided Hallelujah. Yah decided to show you and me how he committed through his son, Yahshua, to willingly give himself up for the extra work it took to save you and me. 
it, it, it took extra work for my salvation. My work was not good enough to save me. My work was not good enough to keep me from hell. My work was not good enough. As much as I do, it, it's not good enough to do. And he saw that I want to do for him, but it, that by itself is not going to be my ticket to heaven. And he supplied my needs according to his riches and glory that he gave his only begotten son to meet the need, the circumstances of my shortcomings. And yes, I, I'm freed up to do the work. You're freed up to do the work. But I'm here to tell you, saints, our work as much as we want to do for him, if it wasn't for Yahshua, it wouldn't be good enough. For well, we are saved by grace and not by works. Lest any of us should boast. Yahshua willingly gave himself up to do the extra work that it took to save us. He even prayed, Father, if it's possible that you could take this cup from me, but nonetheless, not my will, but your will. He was willing, Yahshua was willing to do the extra work. We read verse in, in the book of Hebrews chapter two, verse 16 to 18. It says, for verily, he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Yah came in the midst of the Israelites. He came on the flesh of the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brother, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to Elohim, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people, hallelujah. Yahshua was from the tribe of Judah, which was never mentioned in the law to be the tribe of the priest. It was never mentioned to be the tribe of the Levitical priesthood, not the tribe of Judah. But Yahshua established a new, another priesthood. The seed of priesthood of the tribe of of levy was good, but it didn't provide the means of salvation by itself. It could only represent through their service and sacrifices in the sanctuary what that salvation was. But the priest himself had to offer every year those sacrifices and representations performed in the sanctuary of the coming salvation. But it was in Yahshua took over a new priesthood after the order of Melchizedek to go beyond. He had to suffer to reach that. He had to do the extra duty. He had to die and go to hell. That where we were supposed to go. He was willing to do the extra work beyond. Because if we went to hell, we would have stayed in hell. But oh, hallelujah, when he went to hell, he got up on the third day. Brother Yahud, I feel like I'm, I'm closing out right now. Brother Yahud, you know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. I feel like I'm closing out right Br now. Bring it home. Because they hung him high and they set him low and they stretched him wide. Oh, hallelujah. But he did the extra mile. He took the pain, our sufferings that we deserve. And therefore, Yah has highly exalted him that at the name of Yahshua, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Yahshua HaMashiach is Yah, 
to the glory of Yah the Father. Hallelujah.